And so finally we made it to our last section that we have to cover. Remember chapter four material and chapter eight material, that stuff that we can see in the final, there's not an actual unit test. So this is the last uh, section video that um, we'll be doing, 8.4 material. We talked about how to add and subtract. We talked about how to simplify. Now we're gonna talk about multiplication of radicals. So multiplication of radicals is actually easier than addition and subtraction. We kind of had that idea when we were doing fractions. Remember how multiplication and division was much easier than addition and subtraction? Well, the things that we have to do with multiplication is we must have the same index number. We don't have to have the same radicands, we just need to have the same index. So you can only multiply square roots with other square roots or cube roots with other cube roots. You cannot mix a square root with a cube root. Once you realize that you have the same roots, then all we have to do for multiplication, because we don't have to have the radicands match, all we're gonna to have to do is just multiply the radicant with the other radicant. Basically, I always tell people, multiply inside stuff with inside stuff. Right? And then if there's any coefficient stuff on the outside of the radicant, then you're gonna multiply the coefficient with the coefficient or outside items with the outside items. Once you do that, we're gonna keep that same index number. So if it's square root, square root, it stays square root. It doesn't magically become to the fourth root. Square root times square root means that we're going to keep the same radical of square root. And then we're just going to simplify the radicant uh, if possible. Now, how do we simplify? Remember, that's the stuff that we learned in section 8.2. Right? So for this guy, as long as we have the same index, square root, square root, we're good to go. So just multiply inside stuff with inside stuff. So 7 times 6. We know that's gonna be 42. And then we told you keep that same radical sign, square root, square root. So it's gonna stay square root of 42. Now notice that there's no outside number, so we don't have to worry about that. And then we're just gonna to have to see if we can break this down. Now 42, if you did a tree diagram, you probably already know it's seven times six, because that's how we got 42. And if you broke down six, it's two and three. So there's no pairs of socks that we can take out and put in the sock drawer. So then our final answer is just the square root of 42. It's simple as that. But not everything when you multiply won't be um, simplified. Sometimes you might have to take that extra step. So let's do another one with numbers. How about 10 times the square root of five? All right, so when we have this guy, then we told you, as long as they're the same root, square root, square root, we're good. If it was square root and cube root, then we would leave them as two separate problems. We can't combine them. Because then the question is, if this was cube root and this is square root, what would you put the root at? Would you put it as cube root? Do you put it as square root? Would you do it to the sixth root? It has to be the same. Square root, square root, so it can stay square root. Once you realize we have the same index numbers, then just multiply inside stuff with inside stuff. So this radicant with this radicant. So we know that's gonna give us a 50, 10 times five. Keep the same radical sign, including the index, so square root. There is no in outside stuff. Nothing here, nothing here on the outside. So we get the square root of 50. Now you're going to check. Always check to see if you can simplify. Square root of 42 did not simplify, but this will. Remember, if you broke down 50, you could do whatever you see. Some of you said, oh, it's 10 times 5. Others might have said, well, it's 2 times 25. And then 25 is 5 and 5. So if you know that the square root of 50 is a 2, 5, 5, two, five, five, we do have pairs of socks that we can ball up, take it out of the laundry basket, and put it in the sock drawer. So ball these up, they're the same size, same color, ball them up. Remember when you ball them up, that becomes one complete set. Even though there's two socks, it's only one set. And then we know that we're gonna have our answer of five is on the outside, nothing else. Two is on the inside. 
So this times this can simplify down to 5 square root of 2. Right. So just remember, must have the same roots, then inside was inside, outside was outside, and then see if you can simplify. Let's do one that actually has some outside stuff. Right. So we did ones that only had radicants. We know not all radicals have just inside stuff. Some of them have coefficients on the outside. So let's take a look at this guy. Finally, we'll do a negative one, two on top of it. And instead of the dot, we'll do the parentheses. Parentheses, you know, also represents a multiplication symbol. So we can multiply these two guys because they have the same root. They're both square root sums. See how we have a square root here and a square root here? So we're good to go there. So then we can multiply inside numbers with inside numbers. 3 and 5 is 15. And then we can multiply outside numbers. The negative 2 with the 4. So that's what I mean by here. Must have the same index numbers. Multiply the radicant with the radicant, just inside with inside, so 3 and 5, we multiply to 15. Then multiply the coefficients of the outside stuff. Negative 2 times 4, we're going to get a negative 8. Keep that same radical sign, square root, and then see if we can simplify. So I kept the same square root symbol. And then, can I simplify? Well, if I try to break out 15, I know it's 3 times 5 but I can't break it up any further. Three and five are not the same size socks, so this is our answer for this and this. Let's do one that has some, uh, might look a little different to us. Maybe one that has an exponent, like the square root of 10 squared. Now there's two ways to handle this. I think the easiest way to handle this guy, remember what squared means? Squared just means that like 5 squared was 5 times 5. Just take this 2, see what the base is, and write that base out twice. So remember, when you have an exponent, to determine what the base is, it's the first thing that exponent touches. Notice that exponent touches the set of parentheses. So that means we want to have two sets of parentheses. And each of those set of parentheses, we can't leave them naked, you have to include the square root of 10. So if you had it like this, square root of 10 times square root of 10, then you know you just multiply inside numbers with inside numbers. So inside, inside, so we're going to get 100. And then square root, square root, stay square root because there's no outside numbers. And then once you have this, you know the square root of 100. This could have been simplified, but this is a perfect square that can be simplified. Square root of 100 is just 10. Without the square root symbol. Because if you broke this apart, if you were doing it the old-fashioned way, took the laundry basket, sorted the laundry, said that it's 4 times 25, 2, 2, 5, 5, if you pair them up, the 2's come out, the pairs of 5's come out, so you have one pair of socks that are 2's, one pair of socks that are 5's. See how there's nothing left? So if there's nothing left, you don't need the square root symbol. And what's on the outside? 2 times 5, which is 10. There is another way to do this. I'll show you real quick, but I think most of you like this method. What we can do is work with exponents. Remember how I told you the square root symbol is basically having an exponent to the half? So some people, especially in higher maths, would not deal with the square root. They would say, well, that's the same thing as 10 to the exponent of 1 half. And then you still have this squared on the outside. This becomes, remember, the power rule. How's this the power rule? Because this is a mononomial, so we can distribute outside exponent to inside exponent. So if you did 2 times 1 half, you get 10 to the first. 
because 1 half times 2, which is the same thing as 2 over 1, you would have 2 over 2, which is 1. And 10 to the first is the same as 10. So it's up to you. Most of you probably will do it this way. But just to know that in higher maths, they might not actually do the square root or cube root, especially if this is letters or something, that they would just do it by distributing like that. Let's do some um, maybe with a, a ladder. Just to show that this thing can work with letters as well. So let's do this guy. 4y So for this guy, again, just do inside with inside, outside with outside, once you realize that they have the same square roots. So inside, inside, 3 times 6 is 18. Outside with outside. If you want, you could put a 1 to say that there's a 1 on the outside. So 4y times 1 is 4y. Remember, square root, square root, keep the same square root symbol. Once you have that, then this goes back to simplifying. How do you simplify an 8.2? You ignore the outside stuff, you look at the radicant, and you're going to do a tree diagram. Most of you know that this would be 2 times 3 times 3. You're going to see if there's any socks that match that you can pair up. 2 and a 3 can't match, but 3 and a 3 can match up. You ball these out. That becomes one set on the outside when you put it in the sock drawer out of the laundry a basket. So what's still left in the laundry basket is the two. What's in the sock drawer was the four wine that was already there and the three. And remember, we're multiplying. Okay, so it doesn't matter that this has a y and this doesn't. You can multiply. Four y times three is 12 y. Okay? So even with letters, you can still do this problem as 12 y square root of two. We'll do one more of these with letters. So if we have 5 square root of 10a, we'll do parentheses, I don't want to do that. And then 3. So, how do we do this? Again, even though it has letters, we're multiplying radicals. As long as it's the same index, square root with square root, then just multiply inside stuff with inside stuff. 10a was 2a. So, 10 times 2 is 20. a times a, a squared. Hmm? Keep the same radical sign, square root. And then outside was outside. 5 was 3 is 15. Once you have that, just like we would do with any other simplifying guy, break this down. You probably already know that this can break down as 2a, a, 10 is 2 and 5. So 2 twos of 5, same thing as 20, and then a, a. See if you have any pairs of socks, because remember, we're doing square roots, so we're doing pairs, socks. These two are the same size, they can come out. Remember, when you ball them up, they become just one set. These two are the same size, so you can ball them up, and they become one set. And they come out of the laundry basket. So what's still left in the basket, unpaired, is this five. All this stuff on the outside, just multiply. 15 times two times a. See how they're all outside stuff? Because we took it out of the laundry basket, this is now outside stuff. Remember, I always said multiply inside with inside and outside stuff with outside stuff. So 15 times 2 times a is 30a. So even with ladders, we can do the same thing that we were doing.